Well, this is a bit sad. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, Twitch. Maybe we should change the music. What do the people of Twitch think today? Welcome to yet another data stream. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be. It's Monday. On a very happy International Women's Day to all the women out there. Oh yeah, okay, so it's this song isn't as sad as I thought it would be. So we have some cool stuff planned for today. We're actually going to be continuing on from last time. Where we we're trying to figure out <laughs> if we can uh, eat some delicious sequel. So, is the full menu open today? I'm pretty hungry. I think the full menu is definitely on the table. Um, so we can we can definitely look into opening up that uh, establishment and establishing something, let's say. We can definitely try and make as many puns as possible. Um, welcome to chat. So nice to have you here. And anyone else who is joining, we're just getting started. What is recipe data? <laughs> it's a very good question. Let's jump straight in. Uh, recipe data is something that I got a hold of last time and I managed to find a nice 522,000 recipe database or extract I, I should say and uh, I spent some time on stream last week making some uh, delicious sequel which ended up being not so delicious, if anyone remembers. Um, it, was it was actually running for upwards of 10 minutes at the end. Um, and I promised I would fix it. And I did fix it by deleting it and stopping it. Um, I basically stopped it from running it <laughs> because it was killing my computer. Your SQL may be delicious. Mine looks like garbage stew. I have to say, with all the colors here, it definitely looks quite tasty. Um, so I'm just going to run through what we did last time because I didn't take a lot of time uh, due to work, sadly. Didn't take a lot of time to peek into uh, what we did last week. And it's also good for, for, for us to go over it again in case someone missed out. And if you have any questions, as usual, please always ask. All questions are welcome. Well, you know, MS SQL isn't that much different, though. Um, the base language is the same. But it is, well, it is, uh, can be very challenging. Just, uh, oh, one second here. That's better. The microphone was in the way of my screen which uh, is a problem for programming. I've also installed something little nifty, uh, <laughs> which I wanted to do for a long time, but I didn't know if it was possible. Um, and you'll, you'll find out what this little um, number in the corner means soon enough. I can just maybe use two words, power mode. And some of you might know what this means. In any case, Let's run through what we had last time. So we had a recipe data set. This is the recipe data set we were looking at. It's uh, substantial. I mean, 520,000 rows is pretty decent. We also discovered that it's not all technically food recipes. There are some recipes in there for bath salts and soaps and shampoo and stuff like that, which is very interesting because this apparently comes from food.com, so... Um, or cooks.com, I don't even remember. There's there's a few different data sources mashed together. Oh, wait, did I just use a pun? Someone should start a pun counter for me. That would be much appreciated. Um, 
Also, many thanks to the lovely man in chat who designed my beautiful channel points, the shoes, which you can spend on a couple of actions at the moment. Um, I will be adding more soon because I think this is the first affiliate stream. I, I think so. I do believe it is the case, which is pretty incredible. Not going to lie. Um, yeah, I'm very grateful for all of your support until now, um, especially from, you know it, the claw, the community, which is very strong and noob. <laughs> Where did this come from? Thank you very much for the subscription. You are officially the first subscriber, which is why I also have not had a chance to modify that GIF yet. But thank you for reminding me. <laughs> it's most appreciated. Um, yes, you are the first subscriber because I hit affiliate last week, I believe. I think it was last week, yeah. After uh, cooking up a storm, as they say. So we are stuck in mashing through, mashing the keys. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many terms that are, oh no, <laughs> no, look, you've got the little first. That's great. That's fantastic. No, that's really cool. I really appreciate the support. Um, I will have an auto message come up at some point. I haven't configured it yet, but, um, 99% of everything goes to charity and 1% goes to stream improvements, quality of life stuff. But I, I don't really need much, not to be honest. So that's why I've decided to give it all away to other people who need it more than I do. Because I enjoy spending time here um, showing everyone fantastic recipes such as the skunk smell remover. Like I said, there's not only food in this database. Um, so, fun facts. There's not only food in this database, so we had to also filter some stuff out. Um, and we, we did that. But we had some issues with the data. Uh, I mean, issues. We have some challenges. The main challenge being we have keywords, which are in concatenated uh, parentheses, kind of like an semi array and ingredient quantities and ingredients basically ingredient parts like all the different ingredients you need for the recipe uh so we had to figure out how to get rid of that um because we we can't search this i mean we can search this entire thing but it's very very crude let's say to just do a like or does it contain butter right it would be nicer to have these in separate parts. So that's what we did. We actually did a little query here and I can, I can show you all. Um, yeah, all this data is in one table. I know <laughs> it, it would be nice with reference keys and things like that. But you know, when you get something for free, you take what you can get, right? So what we did is we did this little value formatting, um, where we applied pretty much kind of iterative regex functions to the actual string itself. Uh, so we had this trim the leading C. So get rid of the C and then you just end up with the parentheses. So now you have to take an entire stream to clean up all that. No, that's the nice thing, Toe. We did all the cleaning last time. So like we were, we spent like two hours cleaning the kitchen, getting everything ready. And now we can finally start cooking with sql there's a very funny cooking with gas um gif or is it it's like an old commercial from the 90s about cooking with gas and someone made it into like a music video i'll have to link it later if i can find it see that kind of stuff lands in discord so it's another reason to join the discord um which i will also have to automate for a link in chat for that because i don't have it automated yet because I haven't had time to set up old from the 90s. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm early 30s, so I can say old from the 90s. I think that's allowed. 
I would think. I mean, old from the 90s. Old in terms of memes. In any case, we cleaned this up last time and we can actually see a little bit what we ended up with here. Um, and you may have a clue as to what that little counter does in a moment once we start typing a little bit more. But essentially, if we look at this, New Year's Eve red sangria suddenly now is split out to multiple rows. I was born in 87, Toe. Beautiful year of 87. And you can see now, this normally would have been on one row. So there would have been one row of red sangria with all of those things um, on separate in, in those concatenated uh, fields. But now we've split them out. <laughs> I've been forgiven. Thank you. I most appreciative. And you can see now that we did these splits here. Um, and we literally did the splits with code because this is uh, this is stretching what I would like to see in one field. But I didn't want to just keep repeating this process with nested select statements. It seems a bit pointless, um, to be honest. So we ended up now with you have keyword split, which is beverages, Spanish, European, and easy, and ingredients split, which is uh, all the things that you need to make. Uh, red sangria Grand Marnier which is this uh, beautiful beautiful alcohol I don't drink myself very often maybe once a quarter but Grand Marnier is very nice you can make other things like crepe Suzette which is uh, like flambéed crepes um, so the cooking stuff yeah I, I basically love working with food data I love working with food to begin with so noob you're uh, 89 I didn't realize you were younger than me I actually thought you'd be a little bit older based on your experience that I've seen in your stream. That's uh, very impressive. My brother is also from born in 89. So anywho, so now we have essentially all of these different fields split out. So we did that work last time and it's totally worth it. Now it's done. Then we have cleaned values. So this is like taking from the value formatting. We take the cleaned values because we don't need everything. Um, in the recipe ID, we had like renamed fields and things like that and blah, blah, blah. So I just like to have one case where we clean things up. And what I also did is I removed the quotes, uh, which is this trim both. And this looks kind of funny because the quote is in between the single quotes because you have to escape it. Too much time to try out developing stuff, not enough friends, equals knowledge, I guess. <laughs> what a formula. You know, you don't need that many friends. Let's be honest. I can count my best friends, I can count on one hand, and I'm totally happy with that. Quality over quantity, right? And so this looks a bit funny here when you, when you have these uh, double quotes inside the single quotes escaped like that, but that's the way to do it. And basically trimming that means if we want to actually see what this looks like we can do a little trick that i like which is this one here is called cleaned values right so we just go back go down to the bottom of our cte and we do select from cleaned values and we just put a semicolon and then it ignores everything underneath and you can see here now quotes are gone very cool which is what we wanted so from this state, we went further. We went into community recipe selection, which was based on some arbitrary criteria from chat about people saying what kind of stuff they like to eat. And honestly, it was a very weird selection of stuff. There was, I believe, uh, peppers. And what was in there? Uh, there was some weird stuff in there. I don't remember what was in there now. You can go back and check the VOD if you really want to know in detail, but there was some, like a weird combination of ingredients. I think, uh, what's the name of the curry dish with D? Oh, I forget it now. 
but there was a combination of odd ingredients and I said, well, let's see if we can figure out if there's any recipe that contains all those ingredients. And of course the answer was no, despite having 522,000 recipes here, we for sure didn't have a recipe that contained all of those weird and wonderful things. Um, so we had to do with an in, which basically checks if any of the values are there. Um, and I actually don't need this anymore because we're going to be doing a little, well, I don't need, I don't need to call it this, let's say. Um, I can just call this recipe selection um, as what I, what I want to have. And this is basically where the fun starts, right? We can start to actually figure out what kind of recipes we want to have. And maybe it's good to talk about objectives. And I'm going to change the music because it is too chill and you all will fall asleep. And I don't want that. Uh, if you're going to fall asleep, it's because of what I'm showing is boring and not because of the music. So let's do epic. This should be better. The build up is just crazy. It takes a long time. So I drink a lot of water. That's why there's sometimes some longer pauses when I'm speaking, uh, because otherwise my voice will crackle and pop. Just like Rice Krispies. No, my voice will fade and I'll lose my voice. It's not a good thing. Um, but that was another food pun, and I'm very proud of myself for that one. So feel free to congratulate me in chat. Thank you. So we do want a recipe selection. So let's talk about objectives. What are we trying to get? Well, we're trying to get different types of recipes. I don't know what type yet, right? I want to get recipes that I can make during the week relatively easily. I cook a lot, probably six, seven times a week in total. And I, I kind of get recipe exhaustion. <laughs> we don't have a clap emote. I know we'll have to have a clapping emote just for me. But thank you, Noob. Much appreciated. And so I get a little bit recipe exhaustion because I cannot stand. I really have difficulty scrolling through hundreds of websites to look at recipes especially when the actual recipe content is probably 10% of, of the actual content of the page. Uh, everything else is like ads and videos and I don't know what not. My first emote is a clap emote. Why not? I mean, I don't see an issue with that. If someone wants to make a clapping one, feel free. But I will, uh, I will be diving into the emo creation thing as well. Uh, a lot of people have started and I'll need to pick that up eventually. I'm just not very creative graphically or something. Like I'm not very talented with that kind of stuff. So, Anywho, so I, I have a bit of recipe exhaustion and I, I get like a lot of stuff from like my staple collection. Uh, I can't do emotes, I have to pay for them. I can't do any graphics or UX, just code. <laughs> You're a true developer, that noob. You are a true dev. True devs don't touch front-end stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, front-end stuff like nothing that isn't code. They don't touch all the, the fancy design stuff. Um, so yeah, I have like my staple of recipes um, and I built a little tiny little site for that, which I'll also probably show on stream at some point because I think it's kind of neat. Um, someone like myself who isn't a programmer building a site based on Jekyll. Okay, it was very templated already. Like it had, I had everything that I needed, but uh, I still had to do a lot of modification. Um, and uh, yeah, so apart from my staple, like I tried to find new recipes and of course that's a real, it's a real hassle for me. Hence the recipe data set we're looking at today with 522,000 recipes. I figure there must be a couple in there that I would try. So I try front end, but you see the CSS back and forth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I don't think that anyone can do everything. So, you know, you stick to the stuff that you like and that you know best. That's also cool. 
but I will definitely look into emotes. Um, I'll also probably ask my significant other to do some emotes for me because she's graphically gifted and I'm pretty sure that she could do pixel art. So, so the objective is to get cool recipes out of this data set. And, and one thing, for example, which is important to me is about cooking time and, and complication. Uh, I don't know how to kind of factor complication yet. Uh, it might be something that is a factor of prep time or number of ingredients or something like that. I, I will have to just have to, uh, have to just figure that one out. <laughs> Pixel art clap. Yeah, that would be super cool. Um, and of course, we have some preferences. Preferences in the sense that this is all the stuff I don't like. <laughs> so this is the stuff that I don't want to include in my recipes. Um, no beetroot, no squash, no pumpkin, no coffee. Definitely not. Most other stuff is fine. Like stuff like radish or something isn't my favorite, but I will see when we get to that point. So how do we even get to that point? How do we even get to the point where we come from 522,000 recipes down to like a handful that we can actually try? Um, that's a very good question. And I've been thinking about that a little bit as well. And one thing I thought is, well, I can't start filtering ingredients because if I just filter ingredients, for example, peppers, right? Then I would get all the ingredients that have peppers in them. But I don't know, like, I have too many ingredients that I like, so I can't just filter for the ones that I like. This is way too long. So I'm just going to take the ones I don't like, beetroot, squash, pumpkin, coffee, and put them in the exclusion list. And the reason that I'm doing a recipe selection here is, is I do an inner join later with my, with my own data set. So we have these cleaned values. This is basically the entire data set. And then I do Basically, the recipe selection is like a filter, like a huge wear condition, essentially. And I'm just fetching the ID here. And then because I inner join them later, it only matches the ones that are in both sides of the data set, meaning that it only gives me my selection with all of the stuff here. It does mean, however, because I'm selecting from the cleaned values that I have all of these fields available to me such as the cook time and the prep time and the total time. So it, it's not restrictive at all. It's a very nice method for filtering down a data set with using multiple wear conditions. Of course, you could do it here, but that doesn't give you the same kind of flexibility because then you never have access to your full data set. If that makes sense. I don't know if that made sense the way I explained it. Do let me know if, uh, yeah, do let me know if, if that didn't make sense. Also, noob, you subscribe for six months? Are you crazy? How do you know you're going to watch my stream in six months' time? I mean, now I'm spewing okay stuff, but maybe two months down the line, you're like, oh, Maddie, man, I can't listen to this guy anymore. So I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you very much. So we're going to use this exclusion list here. I have to give some of the craziness back. I suppose we're just gaming Twitch's system, right? If we just uh, exchange all the uh, all the currencies between all of our streams, just gaming the system for visibility, right? I was thinking about that yesterday. You know, if like if I dump a thousand bits in your stream and then you dump a thousand bits in my stream and then I go dump a thousand bits in someone else's stream and then they dump a thousand bits in your stream. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do it at a different scale, though. I mean, I'm happy if one of the big ones wants to come in here and drop, like, $5,000 donation. No problem. I'm happy. Like, I'm going to give it to charity, and the charity is going to be super happy about that. Trust me. Uh, but <laughs> they dump it somewhere and take it off the taxes. Yeah, actually, you can, uh, can deduct donations from your taxes, eh? Hmm. That's actually pretty smart. Have we uncovered some secret some secret like thing that they're doing i don't want this to like blow up or something on reddit <laughs> so anyway so we have this recipe selection and basically here um we are selecting the different things that we don't want so not in 
And the nice thing about wear is you can just combine different conditions, right? So it's not an issue to add a couple more. And no one heard that. Thank you. Um, and now if I do this recipe selection, so let's do select um, this thing, ELV, I will just do dot star for now because I don't really know what we want yet. Um, also, these conditions I don't want. And essentially what we get is all the ones that don't have beetroot, squash, pumpkin, or coffee in them. But it's too... it's still too big. I think we still have way too many recipes. Oh, this might actually be a problem in terms of query speed. I wasn't thinking about that. So not in? The way that not in works is it's actually very computationally intensive because each row is then scanned against every single one of the values in the array. So that can be pretty intense. Uh, I'm going to change the music again. I'm sorry, y'all, but I do not want Epic today. I think it's a bit weird. Um, I do like... Lo-fi is cool. Lo-fi sounds good. If you have suggestions for the stream in general, feel free to also pop them in the suggestion box in my profile. Look forward to receiving your ridiculous suggestions. You could create new tables out of your cleanup one instead of cleaning it up every time if you need speed. That's right. And that's something I'm considering doing um, because each recipe ID would then have a keywords and an ingredients table. And I actually think that's a really good idea because of the speed of this query. So this one took 30 seconds and I don't want to wait 30 seconds every time. And we're going to add, be adding more queries here. So <laughs> yeah, lo-fi equals Harris Heller slash stream beats. Well, you know, I'm using pretzel, but obviously their library is only finite it's not infinite so and i don't want to get dmca striked so actually i think that's a great idea we could definitely do some cleaned values where we just do clv.id and clv.keywords and let me show y'all a really interesting oh we're in power mode insert into um let's call it where is it food dot recipes keywords did i call it recipe or recipes recipes and this is very interesting because this insert into writes directly into <laughs> into writes directly into the uh, table it creates a table for you with the right formatting, I might add. Um, so the ID is whatever it is, whatever the ID is called, uh, integer, maybe what's it here? It's text, but we can actually permute it if we wanted to. Um, so this is very cool. And we're going to do an order by to make sure things are nice. Thank you for the suggestion, noob. I think that's a good one. We're going to order by one and two. So we even have it alphabetically. I think that sounds like a very fancy. Uh... <laughs> Just want to say it's so rare to see SQL and stuff on Twitch. It is. Um, there's probably a good reason for it. <laughs> but I have decided that that's what I'm doing. And honestly, I'm happy doing it like for five people. If those five people get value from it, I really don't mind at all that it it's not ever 500 people i really don't mind um so all of these we already ascertained by the way we did some quality checks last time about the recipe id that it is distinct and stuff and um so now that i'm i'm happy with this i want to lowercase the keywords i just realized that we probably have some duplicate values developers should also learn how to build the basics in sql what I have to fight each day on my day job. 
I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I can imagine what you go through. The fact that I'm not a dev and have learned SQL is for my j day job. Obviously, as a data analyst, I think SQL is possibly one of the most important languages to know besides English or your whatever language you're communicating in. And I, I really recommend everyone to learn SQL because it's a very, very, very widely used language. That being said, I understand people also learning Python or R for statistics and things, but I think it doesn't negate learning SQL, to be honest, because you very typically can't use Python or R directly onto a database. It's, it's possible in some cases, but I really advocate a lot for learning SQL and, and look, I didn't have a technical background and I learned it, so anyone can do it. I'm not particularly intelligent, so I think it's definitely within people's means. Uh, so let's lowercase the keywords. Um, let's check how to lowercase that. Uh, where is this? I think it's lower. Is it lower? Let's try. Lower. Yeah, I think it is lower. And my rainbow brackets is telling me that these are accurate, which is very satisfying. What, uh, what do you do as a day job? noob if you don't mind me asking so everything should be lowercase now i'm hoping come on yeah this is going to be a good decision to put these into separate tables when we're working with this kind of amount of rows it's a good suggestion Perfect. Developer a day, developer on Twitch, developering all day, every day, 25-8. <laughs> sounds like a good sounds like a good basis for a meme. Which actually fits your stream, uh new, because you're making a a meme generator, as far as I understood. Uh I can't wait to see that thing completely finished and up and running. It's gonna be very interesting meme as a service right then you have to have then you have to start charging for it definitely make a subscription model get rich and you can still you can still develop if you want to be a developer 25 8 <laughs> show show stuff at something <laughs> your description is highly accurate so we have our nicely lowercase values now which is very nice which means it excludes um it excludes the ones that were that had the same spelling. There are probably some spelling errors and things, but we will have to deal with that at a later point in time. One thing I want to do is actually remove keywords, uh, the nulls, because sometimes for some reason there are some null values. Um, and now I'm ready to insert this. Why is this not working? Syntax error. What? It's already available if you want to show, play an image, video, audio, something on your stream when something writes a command. Ah, okay. That's cool. I'll definitely have to look into that. I'm not prepared <laughs> right now <laughs> to look into that, but I will take a peek at it soon. Um, but let's, uh, let's have a look here. Um, select insert into Postgres. I'm just very good at Googling. Uh, this one is not right. Insert into table. Mm. 
Why is this not working? I did this last time. I could already be a dev if I can Google. That's really cool. I want to be a developer. I don't understand why... Okay. Insert... I can't even write. Insert as part of select in Postgres. I know that there is. I've done this before. Free code camp if you want to begin, which is also nice content to do on Twitch, so win-win. Ah! Yeah, thank you. Do I want to become famous? Not really. Ban that. Why does this not work? Hmm. I thought that you could do the insert at the end. this before. That's why it's weird. Syntax error at insert. Alright, come on. Let's do 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 do. Um, insert into Postgres after CT. Insert using results of CTE insert. Insert into T2, blah, blah, blah. What? I've seen this done before and I've done it before. <sighs> ah, is it before? Oh, okay, wait. It is before, but this table doesn't exist yet. Insert into products log. You can use data modifying statements in with. Perform several different operations. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to do. Hmm. Come on. I found a very nice tutorial for this once. Hmm. May actually have to dig through Let me just give me one sec. I want to dig through my files. My secret, secret files. Um, yeah, only two seconds. And after that, it's timed out. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely, so I can show you. 
So this was on the previous stream. We did... Uh, just get rid of this. We did a thing with, play, with uh, Netflix data. And you can see here, we did insert. Oh, it's even just into. You don't even need the insert. Oh, snap. All right, so if we just need the into, that's what the problem was. Ah, genius. Hey, Gak. Nice to see you here. Didn't expect that at all. But of course, it's very nice to have you. I see that we share viewers a little bit across the claw. See, noob, I only needed two seconds. Bam. 20 seconds. I'm guessing 25 seconds for this one. There we go. 20 seconds. Now we have our recipe keywords. The nice thing is this table is significantly smaller. 2.5 million. That's not bad. <laughs> nice to see someone else doing SQL. Oh, uh, you really are too nice. Really. I'm just doing SQL because it's a fast way to get results. Let's be honest. So now we have this nice set of uh, ID and keywords. So I liked, uh, liked your suggestion, Noob. So Noob's suggestion was to write this into a separate table because two and a half million rows processing in memory is obviously, it's pretty tough. Um, and now we're going to do ingredients. We now have to check if we have the right ingredients. That's why I've just commented out the into bit. So these are all the recipes with their respective ingredients. Then I think this one's going to be a little bit bigger because each recipe could have like 17, 20, 30 ingredients. Who knows? <clears throat> wow, that was nice. Oh, we need to do the uh, where ingredients is not null. So we had we had the keywords in there. This is very nice. Milk, evaporated milk, and eggs. Who can guess? Who can guess what that makes? <laughs> do I have a different power mode? I never saw that counter or the animation. Oh, well, I did spend some time installing a custom one, but the power mode is, uh, I can show you the plugin since people are asking, why not? Uh, the power mode plugin is called, um, activate power mode X. And then you install the Nyan progress bar in addition and then it works together automatically which is super cool as you can see once we start writing a bit more sql this is going to be it's really going to take off so who knows what these three ingredients make milk evaporated milk and eggs recipe id 100 You only have the simple power mode, then you are truly a noob because you need to get this advanced power mode. I mean, I was typing before, before the stream started, just like, just typing to see how, how it works. That's how I got to 178 and it's, ooh, it is intense. I have my name all the time. <laughs> so I think this looks good. Um, insert into recipes ingredients. So no insert, sorry, just into. Well, you know, if you forget it, then you can remember to ask me and I can tell you, or you can go to the VOD at this particular time, which is at around the 49, 49 to 51 minute mark, something like that. And then uh, you can go back and watch it and find it.
that didn't work, did it? Oh, it inserted it. It didn't actually result. So now the recipe ingredients table, ta-da! So I, w I was misleading before. These are all the things that we need for this recipe. Recipe ID 100. Water, vanilla, sugar, nutmeg, milk, evaporated milk, eggs, cinnamon, butter. What does that sound like to people? I know what it sounds like to me. Do do. Do do. Bread pudding with Jack Daniels sauce. What? <laughs> There's no Jack Daniels in here. <laughs> I guess the Jack Daniels is separate. Okay. This could also be crepes. Hopefully I don't forget. I tend to forget one thing each day. It's a curse. At least it's only one thing. I forget way more than one thing per day. Although, how do I remember that I forget more than one thing? That's the real question. All right, so we are happy having these separate tables um, and they are using basically the ID is a primary key, which is uh, yeah, big brain, right? <laughs> Noob. So now we have this beautiful, beautiful clean data that we already have and we don't need to do all of these steps anymore. So you know what? We're just going to start just going to start a new new console. I guess Jack is a mystery ingredient that needs to be extracted from the name. <laughs> yeah. Extract star from Daniels, right? Um, so, so if we do from food dot recipes, this is like our, this is like our base data, right? So we have RCP dot ID is like recipe ID. Then we can start to do left join uh, food dot recipes ingredients and or should we do should we do keywords first? Let's do keywords first. Uh, recipe keywords get wrecked. Now we're gonna say RCK dot id equals rcp dot recipe id and now if i were to do like this rck dot keywords uh, i'm gonna add a little limit here limit i don't know one we can just see all right so this recipe is spanish let's let's add a few more rows here oh this is this is glorious performance now look at this 914 milliseconds that is truly truly astounding performance so this was a very good decision na seems like a pretty shitty value um, what we can now do is actually before going too deep we can just find out what keywords we have um, and i'm not really sure how many there are let's find out Oh, uh oh, seems like someone didn't format stuff properly. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no, 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 no. This is not good. So we have some issues with the, with that, because this is going to cause duplicates. Data not clean enough. Abort, abort, start again. Exactly. Start from scratch. We don't have to start from scratch. We just have to figure out where it's not being cleaned properly. And I can tell you that it's here <laughs> because this is the ugliest crap. Oh, and I didn't want to do cleansing today, people. I didn't want to cleanse. Update recipes, set keywords, replace keywords. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's basically what we're going to do um, because I can just replace them with search and replace more or less. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, that should work in Postgres. We can do an update, but we first have to get it matching the right ones. So we need to do... We actually need to... We don't need to join anymore. We just need to clean this up. Ah. Um, you're still learning Postgres and it's different to MySQL and MSSQL. MSSQL is my least favorite one. I don't know about you, Gak, but I can't stand MSSQL. It's just so limited. The regex stuff isn't there, a lot of it. Um, you can't even do limit. You have to do select top X from. It's, it's just so, it's so backwards, you know? Uh, where keywords like we want it to be anything and then like that. Mm -hmm. You can do limit, but it uses offset and fetch exactly. And, and it's just more, it's more work. It's more work. And I prefer Postgres. It's the most comfortable one for me. So we can replace all of these values with update set. That is correct. Um, I would have to check syntax because I don't use that very often. So update set Postgres. Do, 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 do. So update set column one equals value two where condition. When I'm at work next week, I'm going to try limit on MSSQL. I think I used it there already, but maybe just remembering incorrect. I mean, you can, you can apply limit, but you need to put offset and fetch, um, in there as, as Gak said, which for me is like more work than just writing limit one. That's it. So let's see, we have values and then we want to do something like this. So we want to, let's do this update. And then this is the nice thing is we're working on like a sub table, not the, not the original table. We can always create the original, uh, we can always create this sub table again if we messed up. So I'm not too concerned. Um, set, but we have to say, um, don't we have to say where we are? How will it know where we are? Where does it? But how does it know where we are if we don't have a from statement? All oh, right, it's in. Ugh. Okay, so update food recipes. Maybe add SQL Postgres in your title. What title did I put today? Uh, recipe. Oh yeah. Dessert is served. In SQL. Postgres. Nice. Good suggestion, noob. Offset start row rows fetch next at rows row only option recompile. Mmm. And I think limit one is shorter than that, <laughs> from what I understand. <laughs> That's why I prefer Postgres. Even MySQL is just uh, nicer to work with. But you know, old companies run old software. That's where it is. 
So we have this keyword condition. Uh, we'll just set keywords equals, and then we'll do, uh, we can truncate it. So let's, let's try and truncate it. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, so we're not going to execute that yet, but we'd have to find a way to trim. Um, recipe keywords. Did it not update the title? I thought it updated the title. Yeah, it did. Okay. Good, good, good. So we have we have our keywords that don't match and now we want to our trim i uh, know uh regex replace um regex replace we can peek at what we did before regex replace is text 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 so the thing you're replacing and then the regex string itself god this is so ugly what we wrote <laughs> it's so awful looking at this somebody save me so Basically, regex replace is what you're searching for, then the match, and then what you want to put in. So if I'm looking for this, I probably need to escape it. And I want to replace it with nothing. Yeah. Exactly, noob. I only need to use this ugly stuff until... So this hasn't worked yet. Mm. Ah, that worked. There we go. So regex replace this. Um, and now we need to also take out the... We could just R trim... Oh, I can't write today. What was our trim again? Trim leading? No, it would be our trim. Uh, our trim. Is it following for the end for the end thing? Oops, our trim. Mm. I want to see the other look I'll even I'll even open the Microsoft one for you oh it's disgusting let's look at uh, Postgres I can't look at MSF skills stuff I want to see the trailing that's what it is yeah look see trim leading trailing both from blah 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 all right so if it's like this, trim, then we call this trailing, what is it? Uh, it's the trailing bracket from regex replace, blah, 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 bracket close. Boom, cleansed. No. Uh, the problem with doing regex replace is when both of them occur, when both of them occur in, in the regular expression, it only picks one. So if I did an or condition to say um, brackets, I think I, the way I understand your question, Gak, is brackets in regex are grouping, but if you want to use the explicit bracket character, um, Oh, you're saying to to remove the entire pattern. Ah, okay, yeah. You mean like this. That could actually work too. 
Let's try that out. That could work. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah, I like that. I hadn't thought of that. That's a very good point. Yeah, Regex is fun. I like Regex. <laughs> but uh, as, as Panther would say, Regex boys... It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a club. So we'll just use this in here and this should work nicely. Okay. That apparently worked. <laughs> regular expression, more like regular pain in my... Yeah. Where keywords like... Nice, we have cleansed it. My friends, we have applied the Lord's work to this table and cleansed, expunged what we needed to get out of it. Oh, why did I do that? I didn't need to close that. Oops. We start fresh. Select star from who dot recipe keywords. So distinct keywords. Oh, come on. Keywords. From order by one. Ascending? Probably ascending. All right. So we have some classifications of the recipes, which is where we wanted to get to. So we spent an hour cleansing anyway. So if you're still here, Toe Frog, I'm very sorry. We spent an hour cleaning up still. Now the kitchen is clean. <laughs> we can do the stuff we want. There's a lot of stuff which we could do with like language processing stuff, which is not, not for today. We're just going to use values as they are. Okay. Um, if stuff is really similarly written, like chicken, we could just do like chicken, for example, to, to maybe do that. But, you know, we're not going to use like Levenstein distance stuff for super complicated things today. Um, so I want to know, we have 315 keywords. This is kind of interesting. Okay. How many recipes fall within, uh, is it called ID? It's just ID, right? So this is basically the count of how many recipes fall into each category. Now we're going to find out. Which are the most common keywords? Easy. Easy 60 minute recipes. Sure. Obviously these are being double counted. So 522,000 something recipes, they have multiple keywords. So these are the, the easy ones. I think it would be relatively simple to say, I want to restrict time. I want to only pick recipes that have a 60 mins or 30 mins. What I don't get is we actually have a cook time in here and a prep time and a total time. So we could technically just use the total time instead of using these categories, but someone's done it for us. I mean, it's like if the recipe takes 58 minutes, then it's the under 60 minutes category. So I would, I would say under 30 minutes is the target. So we have 112,000 recipes that have a 30 minutes. So that's a nice, that's a nice sized pool of recipes. So we have, um, we have, we have like less than 30 minute recipes. We have 112,000 possibilities. So now what we have to figure out is for the ones that do have that, where keywords equals 30, 30 minutes. We also need to add the ones. Oh, we can just do an in here instead. We also need to add the ones that are less than 30 minutes, which is our, the 15 minute ones, these ones because they're also 
technically less than 30 minutes and i don't know if the data set has done it in a way that they are um double counted or not like i don't know if the ones that have less than 30 minutes also have less than 15 minutes as a category as a keyword so yeah i mean basically it's like 200,000, which is we haven't really narrowed the data set down a lot at all which is yeah frustrating but we have our exclusion conditions remember we have some ingredients that we don't want do 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 where are they these guys so what we can do is so we have our oh why are we doing this from the keywords so we should we should probably start properly I'm just going to make a little CTE here. Um, Food.recipes. This is like our base data set. Um, where? There's also this category. To look again what the category was. Where was this? Recipe category. Dessert. Oh, yeah. We forgot about that. Um, so I'm jumping all over the place, but we actually need to get the recipe category because if we don't, um, if we don't do that, then we're going to have some trouble figuring out 312 categories. Gosh, there's also these. Wait, did I just call these keywords? I'm confused. Oh, interesting. So there's some overlap. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't have a huge preference for categories other than excluding the ones that are not food. <laughs> so bath and beauty. Basically, you just just going to exclude these where recipe category not in uh bath beauty because you know we're not we're not making bath salts here people interested about making my lunch um because it's 300 rows we can just scan through it quickly just to make sure there's nothing weird um that isn't food so if you see something and i missed it um do let me know in chat it's gone very quiet. Probably everyone's falling asleep. I think we should uh, up the up the tempo here. I don't want stuff with voices. Maybe like yeah. I was thinking the same noob. Let's do some little. Close enough. It's not quite dubstep, but anyway, we need NLP to process that table and spit out any non-food items. Oh, I know, but it's not so straightforward to get some NLP stuff running on SQL, but I do do have a little thing planned for in a few weeks because I've seen something that you can do and I want to try it out. Um, because apparently it's possible to do machine learning in SQL, but yeah, it would be something to try. Um, Gluten-free grains. There's a whole category just for grains. Halloween. Okay. Pretty sure that's not... Easy isn't food, technically. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they've just put it in the category of easy. It will be a dish that's easy, I hope. We will We will do some, ah, yeah, homeopathy remedies. Like, for example, this one I want to exclude. Like, this is like, uh, or household cleaner. I want to get rid of these as well. These are not good. Ah, okay. Key lime pie? There's a whole category for key lime pie? Ooh, okay. Now, now I'm interested. 
Labor Day. It's all the ho all the holiday stuff here. Um, macaroni and cheese has its entire category for itself. So you can tell where this data set comes from, people. It's definitely not a European data set, I can tell you that. I mean, I heard you could make a great dish with soap. Not sure about the taste. <laughs> not sure? I think you were deliberate there with your pun. Yuck. <laughs> do, 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 do. Moose. N.A. Oh yeah, we can get rid of the N.A.'s. Um, because they don't have a category. We'd like to know more about that, but that's not so interesting. No cook? Oh right, so just raw. <laughs> it was a typo, but on point, you're right about that. That's, yeah, I'm glad you admitted it. That's a very, I'm very proud of you for admitting that. Orange Ruffy? What does that even mean? I'm afraid to Google that. Someone Google that for me off stream and tell me what that means. Orange Ruffy recipe category. I really have no clue about that. Peanut butter. Uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. Interesting. Perch. Blah, 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 blah. Pot pie. Quick breads. Oh, we have to take out rabbit. I'm sorry to let you, you all know, but we have rabbits. And so rabbits are out of the picture. It's not acceptable for us to cook and eat rabbit. It's interesting that like dog and stuff aren't in here <laughs> so we definitely know where the data sets from don't we i wonder if there's any good bat recipes does anyone know if there's any good bat soup recipes or something oh my god was that bear you're kidding me uh okay that's hmm vicious I would make a joke about dog category, but don't want to be racist. No, that's legit. I mean, every country has its own traditions and stuff, and it's for us, it's very strange. Um, but you know, there are um, parts of Switzerland that actually eat cats, which is a bit weird for me, as it's not something we typically see in Europe, mainland Europe. Um, but it just it just has to do with different backgrounds, right? But I, yeah, I mean, everyone has to have their own belief system. Toddler friendly. That'll be our most favorite category. I'll tell you that now already. <laughs> Vietnamese weeknight. Ooh, there's a weeknight category. That's very good. Um, that could be very useful. All right, so I've taken out the ones that I think are not going to be good for us. Vegan to be excluded. <laughs> is, there, is there a vegan category? Oh, there is, yeah. Actually, some vegan recipes are really good, Gag. I don't know if you've tried, but uh, I did the whole uh, for January thing. For the whole of January, we tried to do only vegan food. Um, I mean, we didn't we didn't do it 100%, but we uh, cooked a lot more vegan food than we normally would have. And wow, some of those recipes are fantastic. I mean, really, really good. So, all right, so we've got our data frame. And sometimes you've actually eaten vegan food without knowing that it was vegan, which is kind of funny. If you made pasta with pesto, for example, vegan, if it didn't have cheese in it, um, some of the pestos, they don't have Parmesan in them, and some people don't put cheese on their pesto, so. The closest I got to vegan was the Rebel Burger from Burger King. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. Um... The meat replacement ones. I actually, I actually quite like them. Most of them. Some, of, some of them are not that good, but the, they're getting a lot better. And Gak says I would, I eat some vegan stuff because of my lactose intolerance. Ah, yeah, okay. And my country being a total BS when it comes to food selection, so I can't buy stuff unless it is labeled vegan. Where do you live, Gak? That the, the selection is that, is that terrible? That's unfortunate. So we have our base data frame. Um, if we would do like a little limit, limit 100 or something. Bosnia, oh, that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Switzerland's not so far, I can send you a care package if you need some stuff. 
you can just DM me and tell me what you need. Switzerland is like paradise for lactose free and stuff. We've got this whole free from category and everything. And most of that stuff is actually, um, doesn't have to be refrigerated, right? So speaking of refrigerator, so there's, yeah, I mean, this looks, this looks good. Um, I want to select everything from recipes or do I just want, what do I want from the, what do I need from the recipes table? I need the recipe ID, which is now called just ID. Like if I want some lactose free butter, I need to go across the border to Croatia or Slovenia to buy some or wait for my relatives to come from Germany, Austria and bring some with them. Oh, that's terrible. Really? Surely there must be a lot of lactose intolerant people in Bosnia. Hmm. Um, the name is recipe. I'll just call it title. And what else do we want? Cook time. Cook time. And then we want the prep time. We'll start working with those in a moment because there are going to be some more restrictions for us. Oh no, that's the whole thing. Total time. And then we've got, um, do we need descriptions? We could put the description in there for the lulls. Um, I'm rewriting these because I don't like quotes. Just let, to let you know. And I like being everything lowercase. Um, recipe category. We're gonna put category. And then we don't need the other stuff because all this stuff, fat content, calories, etc. We don't wanna see any of that stuff. <laughs> Just telling you already. So now we have a nice little data set here. Ginger lime melon balls. Wonderful. I was looking for an easy, cool summer fruit appetizer for my August wedding reception. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's probably like a drinks thing. Category is melons. <laughs> Most just ignore their symptoms or attribute them to something else. Whereas I don't have that luxury anymore. And like lactose free, what we have here is milk, sour milk, some cheese, pudding and chocolate milk, nothing else. Sorry to hear that gag. My, uh, my dad's also lactose intolerant very badly. And, uh, Switzerland being the land of cheese. I mean, do you, you know, there's also, um, pills you can take, right? Uh, lactate, I believe it's called when I was in the U S, um, Two years ago, I actually bought him uh, some lactate and took it back with me. So maybe you could get someone from uh, from the US to ship you some. That would be uh, at least a temporary relief if you can't find lactose free cheese and you want to eat like good cheese. Could be an option. So we have a nice little data set now. And my dad says they work pretty well, to be honest. So, um, what do we have now? So the keywords in, all right, we have to do a select from data frame and we're going to left join. So we're going to left join food dot recipe keywords. Um, so RK, RK dot ID equals, Ooh, we got power mode running here. DF dot ID. Um, what does this look like? So each of these recipes will now have, so this one, for example, the apple butter, peanut butter cookies. That sounds very decadent. We'll need to look for those pills and try them. I think one study said about a 60% or something people in Europe are lactose intolerant, but most have mild symptoms. So just ignore it. That's totally possible. Can you send me the name or an image of them on Discord, Noob? Yeah, I believe they're called Lactaid. Um, 
should be able to find them. I think it's called Lactaid. I don't want to get sponsored posts for lactose intolerant stuff because I'm not lactose intolerant. So if you Google it, you'll get the right ads, <laughs> not me. So we have these um, keywords now for each of the IDs, which is wonderful. So we can just do um, RK dot star. That's all the keywords. Then we're going to join onto this or let's, let's filter first. Let's filter. We want to get the keywords uh, thing set. So we had this thing where we don't want these ingredients. Oh, wait, that was the ingredients. Um, we wanted these ones. That's right. I get rid of this stuff. We don't need this. Delete it all. Uh, left join blah 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 where keywords in and this gives us already um, I'm guessing this is called uh, keyword selection all right auto formatting nicely behaving today thank you so much now we can do from keyword selection We can do a left join onto our food dot recipe ingredients. Um, so we'll call this keyword selection. Recipe ingredients RG. RG.id equals ks.id. Wonderful. Now we can do select star limit, I don't know, limit 10 or something. Yep, so this looks nice. So we've got a recipe, we've got the keywords, all good. So now we need to figure out. <laughs> You're not the only person that hates the post office noob, trust me. Although the Swiss post office is pretty efficient, I have to say. So if you can't find them, you should let us know and we can maybe try and uh, shipping some to you. I'm sure there's some here as well. Um, I just think the US ones are particularly strong, probably. That's why my dad asked for them. He likes the strong stuff. So keyword selection, we have to do a total selection here. So we have everything um, because we want stuff from the data frame as well as the stuff from the keywords. Because basically these keywords, well, actually, do we even need the keywords? Just wondering, actually. We can just do the DF star because we don't need the keywords because we know that they're 30 minutes and 15 minutes. So actually we could just do like that. So we'll just do select star from this and now we should have, there we go. More green than usual salad. All right, let's do a little count. I don't know if this is gonna work. This is our selection is, oh, sorry. We have to count distinct the ID because that's the number of recipes, uh, ks.id. This is the number of recipes that are currently available to us. 200,000, wow. That's uh, still a lot. Hmm. We need to get rid of the ingredients that we don't want. So let's do another CTE. Ingre ingredients selection. Oh, did you did you see that? This is very cool. So I've been using this extension. I was talking about this earlier today in another stream. Um, about tab nine, it's a auto prediction extension based on your behavior in the ID. And what's interesting about it is that the model doesn't leave, um, your computer, it doesn't leave your machine, which I like because I don't want my code to be in the cloud. Right. Um, 
but it, it gets better and better and I've been using it for a little bit and it's already getting very good. It knew that I wanted to do a, a common table expression there, which was kind of cool. Um, no, well, that, okay, that's silly. It's just going to return the same result as before. So we want to do everything from here. Um, what do we have in this thing? What's even in here? We probably have double IDs, right? Because we have the ingredient selection ID and the KS ID. Yeah. So we only need ks.star and we need the recipe ingredients.ingredients. That's what we need. Then we shouldn't have any duplicate columns anymore. Wonderful. So if something has three ingredients, then it has three rows. Makes sense to y'all? Makes sense to me. All right. This music is definitely better than before. I'm not falling asleep anymore. We want to get, we want to exclude recipes that have those ingredients. So let's get rid of these. Where ingredients not in. How big is our selection now? It was 200,000. I'm hoping it went down. Come on, come on, come on. Wow, really? We took out something like 30 recipes. <laughs> Uh, all right, we need to do some exploration. What is the nicest way to do exploration? Well, we should definitely see how the, how the ingredients are distributed. We could do something now with um, excluding salt and pepper. Um, and ingredients, let's, let's do it down here. Um, where ingredients equals pepper. I mean, do we, we can just take salt pepper out, no? Uh, if we take it out, then those recipes will leave um, the data selection. I mean, they'll just get up and leave. So we should just exclude salt pepper from here. Oh, where text does not equal record. Um, what now? No operator matches the given name and argument types. Excuse me? Oh, not like. Sorry. Not in. Dosable Steve! With a raid. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream, Steve? Did you manage to finish it off? The game. It was looking good when I left. Just over 90 minutes ago or so. Stream was good. Managed to get animated sprite working. Oh, very nice. That is, that's tricky stuff, honestly. It really is. We've just been excluding salt and pepper from our little recipe selection. <laughs> Gak steps out and there's a raid. Yeah, that's what happens. True hype. So we've got, ah, so there's some sauces. I don't want sauces. I don't want to make a sauce. So, okay, so we have to get categories. Um, Recipe category not in. 
sauces. So we can get those out. Oh. Spreads? Ugh. Oh, really? Smoothies? Oh yeah, we have to take all of those out. Really do. Spreads. These are not lunch meals or dinner meals for us. That's why I'm, t I'm removing these. I'm not saying we wouldn't eat a sauce or a smoothie, but and we should probably take out desserts, right? <laughs> My stream title was definitely a little bit misleading. Um, saying that dessert is served. But we are not... We are not serving dessert. So I think this looks more significant. Potato! <laughs> probably fruit stuff is more of a... Yeah, jams very very hard to sort this stuff but well let's see what we get now um also sugar is probably something we don't want in there this is just a personal a personal personal uh this is just a personal preference that we don't like to cook recipes that have sugar in them if it's not a dessert um we find it very very weird that there's sugar in some recipes. Um, there are a few exceptions, like when we make chopped egg. Um, I'm gonna take garlic out because I know that my my lovely partner doesn't like <laughs> garlic, <laughs> so I'll take that out. So get out of there. What's interesting is. I think I've made a little bit of boo-boo because, because these recipes are not being excluded, actually. So the ingredient selection and the keyword selection is basically, we have a recipe ID of the ones that we want based on keyword. So we don't actually need to left join because we can just do like this. We can say, okay, um, we can just select the IDs. Uh, this is why I did this this way last time. You can just select the ID from the keywords where these are the ones in the keywords and you get your list of recipes that fulfill that criteria. Then you have the ones that fulfill the criteria for the ingredient selection and you do again, distinct ID from recipe ingredients, where ingredients not in blah, 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 blah. And this will give you a list of the recipes that you want. And then what you do is you say, select star from data frame DF Come on. What? There. And then you do inner join. Inner join. Uh, so the data frame is done. Inner join the keyword selection. KS on ks.id equals df.id. Then you do another inner join for the ingredients selection on um, oh we need an alias for this is oh that's not good uh, ingredients ingredients I'm gonna call it T TS on TS dot ID equals DF dot ID so now we have that set and what you do is if you do DF dot star Ingredients does not exist? Yeah, because it's not selected. Now you have all the ones that fit all the criteria, which is 112,000 
Oh no, that's not right. Sorry. Um, count distinct df dot id. I'm liking uh, power mode a lot. I think it's really cool. One six five. We've gone down. One six five seven five seven. Really cool. If you're watching and you have questions, feel free to ask anytime. I mean, I, I repeat this a lot, but if, if you have questions or you want to know about something, this is a friendly stream. Like you're supposed to ask those things. Um, and so what we need to do for the ingredient selection, a little bit unfortunate, but we'll need to somehow filter the ones that are we need to make another common table expression. Add AMA to the stream tags. <laughs> There's already like six in there. I think it's enough, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's just for me, it's like if I put educational, then people should feel free to ask questions. I mean, that's like kind of implicit, I guess. Q&A tag, AMA tag. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Ian. Nice to see you here as well. Spreading the love around the claw. Odd that you weren't following yet, but I'll let it slide. It's okay. And um, I want to do a, what do I want to do? Wow. In, oh. Yeah, you also weren't following. Shame on you. Ian is here. Get your drops ready. <laughs> I've prepared my pants. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's unfortunately no drop command. There's there's no commands at all yet. It's uh, and uh, don't worry about it, Gak. It's uh, it's fine. Don't need to be following. Ingredients exploration. Um, so we want to do a select star from food dot. Yeah, wood, no commands. This is like a boring Twitch stream. There's no commands here. Can't do anything. Uh, recipe ingredients. Distinct ingredients. Where? Oh, you came in on Steve's train. Choo choo. Meme box and drop ASAP <laughs> or we riot. I will, I will be doing stream games. I promise. I promise. I don't, I can't, I can't say when. Um, so we'll just add salt and pepper to this. Uh, pepper, 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 salt, salt, salt. Oh, I don't want the whole thing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the meme box. That will be very cool. Dancing. All right. So these are the ingredients. Seasoning for ground pork, Italian style sausage. Oh, there's still some. Did we actually get this far and not notice that? <laughs> Shame on us. I guess it makes sense that we had the same problem in ingredients because we had the same, we had the issue in the keywords. Uh, guess we're doing this again. Well, it's a different column. Uh, have to be very specific with our query the good thing the good thing is we already know how to do it <laughs> two hours in and not fixed ah yeah frustrating but um well, now we know how to do it regex replace ingredients gak's beautiful suggestion with just do the whole thing at once you're right. We want to search for 
double quote and then a parenthesis and replace it with nothing. Done. And I didn't even test that first. That's how confident I am in my SQL right now. Famous ST stream saying everything is broken and why? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yep, it's fixed. It's fixed. I fixed it. Amaze balls. I love giblet stock from turkey or chicken or question mark question mark for super gravy. Did this work? I'm not going to keep it handy because we have actually fixed it now. I promise we've actually fixed it. it. There was only those two columns, so there couldn't be any other issues. Um, so I want to do now a count distinct um, ID. And look at me almost forgetting my group by, but not. Wait a second, now I'm confused. Yeah. And I just want to select this. <laughs> we need to add a counter widget with speech recognition to sum up broken and why. I actually would like to add a counter widget for how many times I forget group by in a stream. Because that usually happens a lot. Today it hasn't happened once which I'm really happy about, which is really cool. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want to see the top ingredients. 10 inch low fat flour tortillas. Wow. Does this surprise anyone knowing where this data set is from that the top ingredient is butter? <laughs> We would need a new numeric type representation as we would overflow every existing one. <laughs> ah. This is why science and technology is great because the other just chatting wouldn't understand. Why is there no love in the ingredients list? Should we insert love into every recipe just so that it's in there as the top? I can't believe water is an ingredient. This is really mind blowing for me. But anyway. Um, this is kind of interesting, but yeah, now we get to see how these are distributed. And actually what I want to show y'all was the following into food, uh, ingredients counts that didn't, yeah, like this. So that's cool. I have a little surprise for y'all. It's going to put this into a new table. Mm -hmm. And guess what I'm going to do? I am going to start a little Postgres, uh, a little Docker container. And then I'm going to do this. Do 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 do. Can anyone guess what this is going to be? Oh, it's MetaBase. <laughs> PG Admin was a good guess. MetaBase. I get to visualize my cool stuff because uh, so it's an open source um, BI tool, basically. Maddie base. <laughs> if I were to make it my own, if I were to mod it, uh, I suppose. But basically it's an open source BI tool, much like Pablo or Power BI. And in the food thing, why don't I see it? Oh, this really irks me. Why it doesn't detect 
the right stuff. But basically, what I can do is do like this. Ta ta ta. Okay, I can write SQL in it. Good, we can write SQL. Yeah, um, you can write SQL in this tool, which is unique for a BI tool, business intelligence. But what's very cool is you can visualize it directly. Bam. We can start to do some cool stuff because I've just put everything to this ingredients counts table. It's too difficult for us to work with the raw ingredient counts, okay? If we want to work with this with this raw table, we're going to have to start doing crazy amount of case wins and stuff, which which is pretty it's really time consuming and I don't really want to do that. What I want to figure out is are there some ingredients that I should be kind of paying attention to or something. And so one of that way one of the ways to do that is Take notes for code now. <laughs> um, this is a great thing because I can add breakouts. So if, for example, now in the ingredients counts, we didn't do this, but we could load types for the ingredients. So what we could do is maybe get like an ingredients data set. It's not something we're going to do today, but I just wanted to show you. Um, Basically, we could get a master list of all ingredients that exist with some more information about like tomatoes a fruit, um, garlic clove is uh, whatever you want to call it. Oh, garlic powder. We have to take that one out too. Garlic clove. Oops. Gotta remember to put these all in there. Garlic clove. Garlic cloves. Garlic powder. Uh, and basically, what we could do is actually get a master list of ingredients. And then, yeah, we could uh, we could figure out like what classifications of ingredients are used. So meats and etc. I actually have a food list, but I don't have it classified. Um, did anyone watch Svelte Key? stream no i actually missed it as well i was working but uh yeah melky should be here though he really should he really should show up or do you mean do you mean svelte key as in melky or is that a different streamer trying out the svelte serve process for 40 minutes then copied some stuff around and quit for no reason oh no oh Maybe not a good stream. If you delete the VOD, it's probably not a good stream. Uh, I've had a few like that. Yeah, so it would be nice to run with the classifications and then you could have the series breakout here with the classification instead of just taking every ingredient on its own. Um, yeah, you can send links in the chat, Noob. It's no problem. I don't have them banned. Ah, uh, right. Svelte, Svelte. Panther was playing around with Svelte uh, a few weeks back, I remember. When I first started watching uh, her channel, actually, I think it was she was doing some stuff in Svelte. Yeah. Thank you for asking, by the way, Noob. Appreciate. So basically. Um, I would like to do some more visualization of the recipes afterwards once we have a little selection. But I just wanted to show you all that um, something like Metabase is really cool. And what's what's interesting about it is you can run it. So I run my Postgres instance, maybe interesting for you, Gak. Uh, I think you were asking some technical stuff um, before about Postgres and stuff like that. I run Postgres in a Docker container and I run Metabase in a Docker container and they talk to each other. And if I don't want to use Metabase anymore, I just stop it. And it just is dormant. And uh, it's very convenient for me because I run everything on one machine. So, yeah. But anyway, I wanted to get more into the weeds <laughs> for the ingredient exploration. 
because I don't want to go through all the ingredients, but I want to somehow find ones that are interesting enough to exclude. And I guess until, oh, kosher salt. Ugh. Well, okay, anyway. Um, but I think I've got most of the ones that I want to get out. Yeah, that makes sense. So now we could do classifications. So we can get rid of the exploration. It was just a little thing to show you all. Use Docker for code pile as well. Very cool. I love Docker. Huge fan. Um, I don't understand a lot of it as much as I could probably, but I think it's a very, very cool solution. Definitely. Yeah. So we are at the ingredient selection stage. We've taken out the ones we don't like or that I don't like. <laughs> no, look, I've taken out the ones that my significant other also doesn't want to have. She doesn't like garlic. So that's for her. And if she's watching the stream, this is for you. Sweetie, I'm taking out the nice ones that I would love to have, but and in return, I get to take mine out that I don't want. And if I'm going to be doing most of the cooking, then I think it's a fair, fair deal. But now we have to start working on either classifying the ingredients or, or the cook time stuff. So we'll call this uh, basic selection. Um, oh, what's happening here? All right, so we have our basic selection. Now we can start to classify the times. So we know that all the times should be, all the times should be within a small range because we already excluded up above. We already said that we want them to be under 30 minutes. The question is how much of that time is cooking and how much of that time is prep? Because I'd rather be cooking than prepping. <laughs> this makes sense to anybody. If it doesn't make sense, I'm so sorry. Um, essentially, I, I mean, I like chopping vegetables and all that stuff but I'd rather be actually actively cooking. So I get to make this selection now because we have so many recipes, um, right? Let's see what we've, what we've got here. This was 165 something. Yep. So we're at 165748. Those were the last garlic ones that we got rid of. So it's now time to exclude cook times. Um, let's do limit just so it's a bit faster. Um, where hook time, um, we have to trim cook time because there's this weird PT thing in front, uh, trim. Uh, leading PT from cook time. Um, oh, okay. This is a bit tricky. There's also an M. When you have to cook something for 30 minutes, usually means you can put it in an oven or a stove and go take a break. Exactly. That's exactly. Gak, you have gotten it down to a fine science. That is exactly what I'm looking to do. So the prep time here is pretty specific, like five minutes, two minutes. So the total time I know will be under whatever, under 30 minutes. Wow. Oh, Tawny Flex, thank you very much for the follow. Very appreciated. Hope you're enjoying the stream. If you're here for the first time, say hi in chat. 
let people know where you're from. Where are you watching from? We have quite an international crowd here, it seems. Due to time zone, probably more European than anything else, but uh, there may be some other continents trickling in here slowly. So essentially, um, if the cook time is NA, I guess we should take those out because we're not going to be able to know. Or, okay, so we do where prep time, we could do it like this. We could say instead of the cook time, we could just look at the prep time. Tonyplex, your channel was shared at Measure Camp Nordic, so I thought I'd stop by. Hey, that's great. That's fantastic. Um, for those for those in chat who or those watching who didn't know, I was at a, an analytics event on Saturday and did a short presentation about what it's like to be a Twitch streamer in data analytics because there are no other <laughs> Twitch streamers basically in data analytics. There's very few at least. Um, there's a few sort of data science, but none really that I could find from my direction. And I shared uh, shared my channel. So Tony Flex, I'm very happy to see you in chat. So we have this basic selection and now I need to get this. I, I would just work with the prep time because we don't need to work. We don't need to work with the cook time. We can just assume that if the prep time is under a certain amount. So let's trim it. We've got PT and M. So we want to do a trim and then we do another trim. The trailing uh, M from this string like that. So if, if you want to break it up, basically trailing M from, and then we've already trimmed this bit here where we've taken the PT out. So it would be 10 M in this case. This is a nice change of pace from Counter-Strike I normally watch on Twitch. <laughs> Twitch dev scene is mostly JS web dev or game dev. There's rarely stuff in between. Yeah, this is very true. But I think there's a lot of potential for this area to grow. I'm, I'm not saying that my channel will grow. I'm saying that there's so much potential for education on Twitch. Um, we saw what happened last year, right? We saw how the world changed so quickly and tons of, tons of students were catapulted into online learning. And let's face it, most teachers never had experience streaming before. So I think it's a great thing that yeah, I mean, it's a bit of self-love, but I think it's great that people like myself, but also plenty of others like uh, White Panther or, or, or Noob or, or Gak, that all these people are streaming this kind of content where it's educational in nature. It really is. And I think that's a really great thing. So we have this double trim happening here, and now we have a pure number, essentially. So the prep time should be under five. I don't know if this will work. Let's see what happens. No, it's a uh, text. So we can't use that unless we do this. Uh, it's not integer, is it? Do, 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 do. Thought it would be integer. Why can't I? Come on. Cast, blah, 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 as int. This is weird. Maybe it's just too complicated for Postgres. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what this actually looks like. Maybe it's a weird thing. Yeah, these are numbers. Hmm. Do we have our dream recipe yet? Welcome to the stream, Panther. I hope you see uh, your lovely little badge in front. I have given you the honor of being a VIP in my stream. Because of your support and encouragement over the last few weeks, of the beginning of my uh, streaming journey. 
So I have taken it upon myself to bestow you with a VIP badge. And Noob has become the first official subscriber to my channel on Twitch, which I'm also very happy about. So it, overall, it's been a fantastic stream. And we are close to getting our dream recipe. We're having a bit of an issue here with the prep time. Because it is a number. But why is it not letting me cast? Do 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 do. Cast as integer postgres. Why is it not letting me? See, it's int. I'm I'm not crazy. It is int, but maybe it just needs a wrapping little bracket thingy. Sometimes. Hey, that seemed to do the trick. There we go. Invalid syntax. What? 1H. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Gak! Thank you for the subscription! That's really cool. You just pooped in. <laughs> I assume you popped in. Oh. Thank you for the bits, White Panther. I really appreciate that. I will have to work on my alerts because they're still noob standard. And I mean true noob, not that noob. I mean true noob, Twitch noob standard because they're not modified yet. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Go ahead and flex all the badges. But I appreciate the love, people. It's very nice. The problem with this trim is that we have... We have an H. Ah. Poop the newbie. <laughs> Surprised that didn't get auto-modded. You are very clever, Mr. Noob. So we have an issue. Okay, we'll have to do some cleanup of this. There's no way around it. We need to do some cleanup of this. Um, so we need to do case when... Uh, so when the... What's it called? Prep time. Like, I don't know, something H. Then... <laughs> All of this was written by White Panther. You can't take credit. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, actually, we should check out, we should definitely check out what kind of, what kind of prep times we have, just to know. Um, let's take this out. Give me all the prep times. Holy moly. Oh, there's even ones with seconds. Uh, 120 hours. How is this recipe in the 30 minute category? 10 hours, 35 minutes. Mm. <laughs> Time to get Chris here. Flex all the way as much as you all want. I'm just trying to figure out how to get recipes that are under 30 minutes. Is it such a big ask? I just want to cook simple stuff. Mm. <laughs> so we're doing... Oh no. What have you done, Gak? So we've got... Hmm. So we've got... 46 types of values. Well, I can exclude all the ones with hours in them. Because, let's be honest, those are going to be too long anyway. So we can just do where prep time not like H. And that way we have none. Uh, 
Oh, where did we where did we do the exclusion thing uh, before? That was the ingredient thing. Uh, that was the recipe category thing. So we took out the NAs. Prep time six hours. Yeah, prep time six hours. Oh, hi, Persican. Nice to see you here. Did you also come over on the raid train? Seems like there's a lot of people coming over. It's very nice. Uh, we've got... Where's this? I don't know. The ones that are zero seconds seems a bit off to me. Zero S, like this one. Mm. That will at least remove these from the data selection. So 33 permutations. These are all minute values. Now we can do the cleanup. Now we can do it. Trim trailing M from leading PT prep time where int is less than 31. I could write one more character and do less than or equal to 30, but I chose not to. Did this work? Seems like it. Nice. Prep time count distinct ID. I almost I almost forgot the group by. It was close. Group by one. Ah, ID is not. Ah. When you have multiple IDs that are all called the same, that's what happens. Ooh, okay, so there's a lot of 10 minute recipes and a lot of 15 minute recipes. This is one minute prep? I think we found our dream recipe, Panther. If you haven't gone to bed yet, I think we found our dream. I don't even need this trim. I can just say where prep time equals PT1M. Do, 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 do. And now we have our selection. We have 2,380 recipes. That's enough. Prep times in seconds, not good. No, because they're all zero. Uh, so Persican, we started with, um, 522,408 recipes. And we are now, we have whittled it down. We're at 112,000 possible, because those are like the under 30 minutes. Basically, we want to do, um, not too complicated, which I'll get to in a moment. I will get to complication, because I have an idea for that. Um... And we, you know, get rid of like preferences and stuff like that. So we've done that, done that. And now we are at the basic selection. Oh, let's call this time selection because this, this is more appropriate. We'll call this time selection. Great. It is great. We've we've really made good progress. Uh, considering it's a Monday night, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. And I'm very happy for everyone's support. Really appreciate that. Do, do, do. So, what do we want now? Oh, I still have this stuff in here. Uh, no! Okay, I made the mistake now with the group by. I left the group by in when it wasn't needed anymore. So we have our time selection. So we can now exclude those. Next database project will have 40 million. Uh, <laughs> ties into a good question from Tony. Is this just locally on your machine? Yes. So this Postgres instance is running within Docker. And actually, there is a way to see usage, I found out. So you can see at the moment, CPU marginal doesn't really do much. Um, it has disk read write 
network, which is just local network, so it's not very much, and memory. And of course, if you try to do something complicated, let's see if I can do this. I'll just resize this a little so you can see. So if we if we run this query, you can see the CPU spike to 100. I have eight cores, so I can go to 800%, just so it's clear that it didn't use all of my CPU for that. Um, but it can, it can spike at any given time. Um, see, now it's running the query, 74 meg usage, etc. And it's just good to keep an eye on it, but I found that Yes, it's only using 70 megs for half a million entries because it's not parsing uh, the way that we've set up the query. It's very efficient, basically. Um, and this is memory usage, not disk usage. But yeah, it's a, it's a very efficient thing. Um, no index columns, no keys, nothing. So we could definitely optimize the crap out of it, but we haven't. Um, what is very interesting about your question, Noob, about 40 million entries, I was working with a data set that had 52 million rows. And in order to avoid extra costs for us at work, um, I wanted to do it locally and I was able to process in terms of the query I was writing which was relatively complex I was able to process around 12 million rows and the memory the memory heap got too large because basically what happens for Postgres is as you saw from the stats before when it's running within docker it basically just scales the memory requirement to work with everything in memory until it can output to disk into a file um, and so sort of around 12, 13 million was the hard limit. So 40 million locally, it's technically feasible, but I think it's going to mess, it's going to mess stuff up. Uh, especially if you want to do more complicated queries, you should break it down and then, um, we can actually dump this. Um, you should break it down and then try and work with the smaller subsets, I think. Uh, Gak, did you scrape all that info into a DB or were you able to download a DB dump? I just downloaded a CSV and imported myself. So you can go watch the VOD. Um, it's up on YouTube as well. So you'll be able to watch that. The link's in my uh, about page on Twitch. I will have those like auto message stuff at some point. I don't have them right now. To uh, a link to the YouTube playlist. The video is also still on, on Twitch, so... You can also go watch the, uh, the video there. But we basically just imported it uh, from CSV. This one is from Kaggle. Most of the data I find is from Kaggle. Not everything, but um, Kaggle has a very, very good repository of, of nice data sets. So, yeah. Thanks for the questions, everyone. I think it's very interesting to, to see what also what people want to know as well. So now comes... So we have 2,000... 380 recipes that should technically take yeah that's the one per second that's exactly the one that I found mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. could be very interesting to do some stuff in R as well mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to know the query that I built uh, it was basically to calculate time differences between different sessions um, so basically when someone visits a site or an app to calculate the time lag between sessions and then to cluster them based on those time lags. And of course, any time computational function is always really, really intensive uh, memory wise. Um, those are always pretty bad um, because of the native plugin of, you know, the database, it, it has time calculation within it. Strings and things like that, you have to tell it what to do with it because it doesn't know what the string is. But time functions, it definitely knows. I wish I could show stuff like that on stream, Noob. Honestly, I wish I could. But unfortunately, the data is confidential. And that's the biggest problem with my type of work is I would love to stream my work <laughs> like Panther does. That's the dream. But uh, at the moment, for my employer, it's out of the question. So. 
Yeah, so we have now a nice category of all the dishes that take no time at all. They take one minute prep uh, and under 30 minutes total time. So we can now just have the ID uh, df.star. We can just have an ID and we can have a title and then we can have the description, the category, the, I think that's it. That's it, right? Yeah. So these are the 2,380 recipes that we would want to pick from. The issue is there's too many to pick still. So what I would do is just start with the categories and see what have we got. What categories are left? Where are the most recipes um, located? Group by one. Let's see what happens. Should have done an order buy in there. Cool. P -p -p Power code. Oh, beverages. We made some mistakes here. We have to take those out. All right. Beverages. The list is getting smaller, people. Beverages. Breakfast is fine. I could have quick, quick. Okay, shakes is no good. I'm not gonna have a milkshake or a shake in general as a meal. It's just not my thing. Um, we're gonna take out candy because that also, yeah. Mm, frozen desserts, gonna take those out too. This is not the most efficient way of doing it, but it is, it works. Oh, punch beverage, punch, punch beverage. That's also a beverage. And we also want to take out breads because I'm not going to have a bread as a meal and salad dressings because I can make salad dressings. That's fine. <laughs> like, Tony, you would like salad dressing as a meal. That's pretty hardcore, to be honest. <laughs> uh, cheese as a meal could be interesting. It'd be interesting. Don't forget, like these are categories. So cheese means the, the dish could be like cheese covered potatoes or something. It's just one of them. I, I said before that the kid friendly meals might be the one. So let's see. Um, beans, chicken breast, clear soup, quick breads. I'm going to take those out. Just drinking vinegar shots straight out of, oh, oh no, that's awful. <laughs> quick breads, take those out. Um, there's actually like, you know, the cream of balsamico. So the balsamic vinegar that's been reduced in like a reduction and you can buy it as like a, a cream of balsamico. That stuff is absolutely amazing. And that's something that you could probably drink out of a bottle. <laughs> yeah. You can't smell vinegar and stuff. Oh, like because it's too gross. <laughs> Start your day off with a uh, nice little whiff of vinegar. High protein oatmeal cheesecake. Cheesecake has its own category. Like I said, I know where this data set comes from. Uh, cheesecake drop cookies. We don't want those either. Healthy steak. Berries? Sure. I mean, if it's yummy, I don't mind. Gelatin as a category is a bit odd, but I'll accept it. Let's see what happens. Tarts? Oh, we gotta take tarts out. No offense. Brown rice, Australian. I wonder what Australian cuisine is. Shrimp on a barbie? Stonks. 
mean, there's only like three entries, so it's not a huge deal. Um, I'm glad there's two Canadian dishes in here. That's great. Pies is Australian. Mm-hmm. Could be. Definitely. Mac and cheese. Oranges. <laughs> Just meat pies. <laughs> Spaghetti. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not so concerned about these because there's just one or two and they don't really skew the entire results. Mahi Mahi. It's interesting. Scandinavian, Swedish, Vietnamese, whole chicken, whole turkey. Whole turkey? Well, we're not going to be making those, but they would be viable options. All right. So we've got the exclusion set up a bit better. Now we should have only the categories that we want. There's 118 rows. Most are in breakfast and lunch and snacks. We could definitely here just concentrate on lunch and snacks for the moment. I think it's a, it's a viable thing because, I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some recipes for the moment. Category doesn't like this. Oh yeah. Why, why is that? Hmm. Why doesn't it like that? I think because it's a reserved keyword. Hmm. Some weird stuff happening here. I don't really understand that. Why the... Oh, right. Category equals. Ooh. Don't need that group by anymore. So these are all the lunch and snacks. So we don't need the category anymore either, actually. These are all the lunch and snacks recipes. This is where things get a bit tricky. We don't know. We don't know how good these are. There were some ratings in the original data set, but I don't trust other people rating. Hope you find something before you start. <laughs> this was pleasant. I'll be back another time. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. Um, I, I think I'll find something before I start. I have a few more hours until I really need food, so... I think it'll be okay. Quick microwave chestnuts. <laughs> this is hilarious. So what's interesting now is, technically speaking, in the ingredient selection, we could do some more work here. Gak, time to, for you to go to bed. It's also almost my bedtime. Do I have a set schedule? Mondays and Fridays, 9 p.m. CET is the norm um maybe throw in a bonus stream or two during the week or on the weekend but generally speaking it's monday and fridays at so we kick off the week together and close the week together is uh my thinking it's also the best days for me to stream time wise so um it was great having you gak thank you again for the subscription i really appreciate it Hope you're able to sort out the uh, lactose medication. If not, um, let's chat in Discord and see if we can find a solution. See you on Friday. Indeed. Indeed. Do do do. So we could we could mess around with the ingredients up here, um, but seeing as I'm just selecting the ID, I don't want to do any messing around. So what I'm going to do is just again. Do a left join here, or perhaps an inner join is more is more appropriate. But um, we can just do a left join with the food dot recipe ingredients. Um, I'm just going to call it ri on ri dot id equals ts dot id. Now we need to actually reference these because we have that dual id problem. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, so, and now what we can do is if we include the ingredients, okay, 
we now have I'm just going to comment out the title and description for the moment. We now have the the recipe ID with its original ingredients as well. So for example, this one has Miracle Whip and low fat Swiss cheese in it. And my idea is to do the following. It's very crude, very, very crude. Oh wait, we actually have to work out how many, um, how many recipes do we have in here? Let's find out. Wow, what's the spelling here? I want to see how many we have. 234. Oh, okay. This is good. This is definitely manageable. I'd like to have it down to sort of like 12 or 15. Something like that. So we'll count. We'll remove the count. We don't need that anymore. TSID. Can put a distinct in here don't really need it but yeah the tsid and then the ingredients and basically it's a bit crude but we could kind of count how many ingredients are in the dish and if we use that as like our complexity <laughs> i'm based on how many ingredients are in the dish why not i mean why not right is it so is it so crazy to do it that way i mean someone tell me i'm crazy but i don't think it's such a weird thing it's gone very quiet Ingredients API based on your local markets. Ooh, that would be so cool. That would be absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I do have I do have access to an ingredients list where I could find out more about each individual ingredient, like what category it belongs to. It's like a food categorization thing, but I don't have it loaded in here. I'd have to go dig it out and find it anyway. I don't know exactly where it is. But basically, if we took each ID and counted its not, its respective ingredients, this would be the ingredient. Well, let's just call it complexity. <laughs> so now we need the group by. And so each recipe now has a complexity rating. Okay. So the number of ingredients it requires. And honestly, anything with one ingredient is highly, highly doubtful that we're going to be able actually to cook that as a meal because Let's let, let's just look at what this is, for example. What's this? This is a fun, low carb treat for kids or adults. What? Take one cone and fill it with whipped topping. Really? Yeah, I'm excluding any of the recipes with one ingredient. I think this is just terrible. <laughs> Select from... We're going to do... Where's this? Uh, time selection. So time selection is like the one where we've joined with the keyword and the ingredients. Oh, Ian. 200 bits. Wow. Thank you so much for that. I'm very shocked. Um, I hope you're enjoying the stream. Definitely. So we could do things in the time selection. This would make more sense, actually. Hmm. Hmm. Let's call it complexity selection so that it's a bit more consistent. So we'll do from the time selection, which is TS. We'll do an inner join. 
Ah, but we only want the ones... No, no, we... this is the other way around. We need to do the other way around. We need to do the complexity selection. And then we need the inner join in the time selection. TS.ID equals CS.ID. And basically say, what do we get out of this? I think we get all the information we wanted. Yeah, exactly. So what do we want to have? We want to have the TS dot star. So everything from time selection. Uh, well, TS dot ID. Oops. I think I saved it in my clipboard. Yeah. We want the title and the description. Oh, this is a good track now. This is good to sort of finish up the stream and hopefully get to our sort of nice 12 to 15 recipes that we can actually take with for the week or next two weeks, I would say. So where complexity uh, is greater than one. Let's do between. Between two and I don't know, seven. They're inclusive, so. How many recipes have between two and seven ingredients? 176. Okay. But still too many to filter manually by eye. Um, I'm gonna go more complicated. I'm gonna say four and seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're getting to a little sweet spot here. 77. I think I'm going to actually up the complexity a little bit. See, this is now something we can sort of tweak with, right? To see if we find a nice little subset that we like. 47. Okay. This doesn't seem too bad. 10 minute Chinese five spice tofu. Hmm. Sounds pretty nice. Um, so these are all in the lunch snack category. I wouldn't mind having the keywords again, just to see what keywords, because we, ah, these are just in the 30 and 15 minute keywords. Oh, they might have other keywords, no? Left join. We can do an, a left join after. With this current subset, this would be a cool page to build after you go through free code camp. Well, I have a little recipe site already, and my idea is to basically spawn these into the little recipe site um, once I've cooked them, of course. The only recipes go into there that I've actually made, because otherwise I can't trust it. So I let's call I don't know let's call this recipe keywords rk.id equals cs.id. Now I could actually bring in the keywords again. Yes. Um, yeah. I built something. It just sort of a little weekend project thing. Um, there was a template around. The code was on GitHub. I wanted to try it. Ah, yeah. So see, look, there's there's all these tags, right? And what if I just select the ones that have weeknight, for example? And keywords equals weeknight. Then, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's past my bedtime. Oh, okay, we have our answer. We have three recipes, oriental celery soup, rock and hummus, and spicy corn naked chicken cutlet sandwich. 
which sounds interesting. So what we do with this selection, final selection, is we name this the final selection. <laughs> and then we do select star from final selection, which is FS. Uh, left join food.recipes uh, re, I don't know on re.id oh wait, we need recipe id equals fs.id now we do fs.star and we want to have re ingredient what do we want from here i don't know what do we want what do we need from the original data set i'm not even sure that we need stuff um hold on a second oh we need like all the instructions and stuff recipe instructions I could have included those in the beginning, huh? That would make more sense. Would make more sense, wouldn't it? Um, so in the data frame, we will include recipe instructions at instructions. And then where do we reference the data frame? Not here, not here, and here we take everything with df.star, complexity selection is fine, we're just getting complex recipes, ts from complexity selection, ah, hold on, left join recipe ingredients, blah, 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 inner join time, ah, it's in the time selection. But we have everything there. Okay, it's fine. We don't need to worry. Then we can do here in the final selection, TS dot instructions. Boop, done. And then we can just do, don't need to join again, which is nice. Select star from final selection. Bam. Oh, and the instructions are a little bit... We'll have to split them out. Hmm. We don't need the keywords anymore, do we? Mm hmm So this would be... This is it. We need the ingredients, though. Um, so left join... Food dot... Food and recipes ingredients is ri ri dot id equals cs dot id so we need the ri come on what's happening here ri dot ingredients because we need we need the ingredients and we can actually array them again uh, we could just array aggregate them so that we don't have separate rows um ingredients array uh oh we need to group by oh yeah of course ha so i did forget it in the end group by one two three four one two three four yep yeah. And now we have the ingredients and the instructions, and we'd have to clean up the instructions a little bit. And this is the array of the things. And then we would need to put in, obviously for the ingredients, <laughs> you're just exploring the data in R and there's a recipe at how many calories? 612,000 calories. That's like, 80,000 Big Mac menus or something, right? That's crazy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Calories. 
greater than oh no i can't do greater than om nom nom <laughs> eating for life literally two six four eight one seven thank you two six four eight one seven Oh, corned beef. It's probably like a, a massive portion as well. <laughs> Heirloom butchering time recipe impractical for most modern cooks. Yeah, that makes sense. But it also makes huge, huge quantities. Yeah, 200. 200 what? Pennsylvania. What is this? 200 beef? What's 200 beef? 200 what? He loves? Wow. <laughs> what is this? 200 kilos of beef and like 280,000 sodium. <laughs> oh, wow. Get wreck. Really? Put as much fresh killed beef as desired in the barrel to be corned. Cover with cold water, covering by two inches. Let stand for 48 hours. Drain off the water. Oh my word. <laughs> this is just... <laughs> I'm so glad you pointed that out, Persican. <laughs> <laughs> so the instructions, the instructions. Um, we need the instructions. Um... I want to clean up the instructions, people. I, I want, I just, I have to clean it up a little bit. And then we can go to bed, I promise, okay? We have to clean up the instructions. So we are gonna do. Okay. Regex, replace. In the instructions. Only one more column. Yeah, because we have the array. Oh, we also need the amount, technically speaking. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> we need the amounts, don't we? Uh, what are the amounts? Quantities, I think it was called. Recipe ingredient quantities. And they're in the right order, so... That would be kind of important. We know how much to put in. Um, regex replace, we're, we're going to clean this up. Okay. We're going to get rid of, um, instructions. These are basically steps. So we're going to get rid of the C. We're going to get rid of the C and each of the brackets. So we'll replace the C with nothing. Mm, I want to be more safe when it starts with C. Then I will regex replace this bad boy and I will replace uh, I will replace my life now i will replace now this string which is bracket oh come on bracket single quote which i'll need to escape like that with nothing comma so this one should disappear now the left side one oh you know what i need to just only remove the bracket because i have to trim the quotes afterwards then, ooh, then I can do B trim here instead of regex replace. I can do B trim, um, B trim, both. Uh, can I do like this? We should try this. I don't know if this works. Uh, trim, 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 trim. 
Yes, it worked. Yep. And then we can regex split to table. Split to table. And that goes something like this and then the separator, which is a comma. Did that work? I feel like it works, but I'm not sure. Nice. And we'll just be trim this to clean it up. Because it just takes out white space from both sides. Ah, oh, there's commas in the text too. Mm. Okay, wait. Regex split to table. The separator is something like that. Mm. No, it's a comma and then an empty space. Yes, new lines, I know. It's not easy to clean this stuff in SQL. So it's gonna be, ah, uh, this is, no, this is not gonna work with split to table. Definitely not. Each of the steps are, oh, that's just, Yeah, I think that's that's one we're going to have to leave for another time for the instructions. ts.instructions. I could probably read them, but um I do need the quantities. Um quantities. Is that what we called them? I think we called them quantities. Yep. Quantities. So if I do just the ID and the quantities, what does it look like? Honestly. Group by one, two. I promise this will be the end. Then we can all go to sleep. So the quantity has the same issue but there's no commas in the quantities at least. So I can make each, I could do each a match of like each ingredient with the quantity in its own field afterwards. It's something I would need a little bit more work, but it basically do a split out of the quantities like we did earlier. Um, like here which caused some issues, so we would have to probably clean this up a little bit. But then we could have the, basically my idea would be to have something like garlic and then double colon. Basically I would want to have like this, like this, but I would want to have garlic and then half a tablespoon, something like this. That would be my idea. Parasikan, thanks for joining. See you later. Thank you for your compliments on the stream. Hope, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I will also be calling it a night here. We have achieved what I wanted to achieve. Essentially, we have Three recipes. Um, we have three recipes that fit our criteria, everything considered. Um, yeah, we have everything that we need for these three recipes. So I'm definitely going to be trying these out. 
the the hummus okay i have a good hummus recipe but i'm happy to see what the this one is like corn naked chicken cutlet sandwich sounds very interesting to me mayonnaise sriracha lettuce that seems cool I'm remembering of course that max ingredient count is nine here so between five and nine ingredients that seems like a good sweet spot and oriental celery soup i made up this recipe a few years ago and has been favorite since if you don't really like spicy things use less pepper you can also substitute cream of celery with cream of broccoli or cream of mushroom so it sounds sounds pretty interesting uh hummus is not new for us but um interested to try a new recipe why not and that is the result of what it's like to cook with sequel i hope it was interesting um i hope you found some kind of use for my babbling if you'd like access to any of the SQL code or the data set, I think someone posted the link, but I can definitely dig it up again. Feel free to message me. Select clap from viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, noob. I appreciate all the support and love in chat. Really, really enjoy streaming for everyone. I think it's a really nice activity it forces me to think about things differently um, when i'm explaining them it's basically constant rubber ducking which i think is a really interesting concept for me and i hope you're able to learn something and if you have suggestions for what you'd like to see on the stream pop them in the uh, suggestion box on my twitch profile and other than that i wish you a very good evening and see you on Friday to close out the week with some interesting things, let's say. We will not be looking at recipe data again on Friday. Maybe again in the future, but yeah. And now we have to pick someone to raid. Do, do, do. Who would be a good candidate? I think there's a good candidate online. Mm hmm. I think there are some good, good candidates indeed. Mm hmm. -hmm. Yes. Let's raid someone, noob. Let's raid someone. So, let me just do my little selection here. So, we are going to raid CM Griffin because he's a wonderful person and we are getting ready to raid oh one viewer two viewers this is good let's do it bye everybody and thank you again <laughs>